Hi everyone and welcome to Let's Have a Chat, where we highlight and talk to some successful leaders within the corporate industry. Today I have a distinguished guest with me and that is Mr. Duane Balcon. He is CEO of DS Balcon Suriname Envy. Welcome, Mr. Dwayne Balcon, and thank you for your time doing this interview with me. Thank you, Priscilla, for having me here this, uh, today. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Balcon, oh, Mr. Dwayne, <laughs> <laughs> could you tell me a yeah. little bit about yourself? Um, so, yeah, Priscilla, I'm a Trinidadian, you know, born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. um, migrated to the United States uh, a couple of years ago. So I presently reside in Houston, uh, Texas. You know, um, doing business out of Houston, but mainly have all our offices set up in the jurisdictions, uh, Suriname, Guyana, and also uh, Trinidad and Tobago, where our head office is. I started business uh, in 1998, all right? Um, I tell a lot of people when I started business, I started business with just a capital, a working capital of $500. Yeah, okay. only $500. You know, and that is not U.S. dollars. That's 500 Trinidad and Tobago dollars. In those days, that may have just been a $100 U.S. Mm -hmm. That was my capital. Wow. $500. A telephone, a rotary telephone, mm -hmm. and a typewriter. Okay. I started business out of my home. Converted a bedroom into an office. And that is where I started from. But one thing I had was the courage and determination Mr. Duane, uh, could you give me some highlights uh, or achievements within your career? I started off as a, a, a boarding clerk at the shipping company back in 1990. All right, and uh, within seven years, you know, I decided to open my own business after moving up the corporate ladder at my place of employment. Yeah, so one of the main highlights really in, in my career is achieving the goal of having my own business, having my own office set up, you know, and having a, a employees who I can call my family, you know, yeah. Because at DS Belcon, um, Priscilla, we uh, treat our employees like family. We don't only say it, that they are our family, but we demonstrate it by the way uh, we treat them, you know. And last year we celebrated 25 years in, uh, in the industry. You know, and after 25 years, this year is a 26 year in business. I am here because of determination and courage. You know, anything in life is achievable. And this is something that I always know and I always live by. You can achieve anything in life. You know, it was amazing to hear some of the comments from the employees, you know, um, having worked with uh, the company over a lot of, uh, most of them work with the company over 10 years. You know, it was really uh, amazing and touching to me you know so just having employees happy you know seeing them progress also together with the company that is my greatest achievement you know because i'm a people-centered person mm -hmm. you know so once they are successful successful i am happy also once we are improving in business and uh, generating more income and so on all right our employees automatically goes up with us you know, we take them up with us, you know. It brings a joy to my heart to see my, my, my employees, you know, uh, doing well also in life. Last week, an employee came to me and said, uh, boss, I'm going to purchase a house. And that was really, like amazing to me, you know. And, you know, the first, my first thing is that congratulations. Do you need any support from, from, from the company? How could we help you? You know, because this is who we are. We are people-centered. Yeah. You know, and I think the, um, that is first and foremost in our business, our employees. Yeah, without them, we are nothing. We are nothing. Yes. Yeah. That's a, a very good insight uh, yeah. that uh, most companies can also um, strive for. It's being people centered because yeah. um, I believe that a company is actually nothing without happiness of their employees right exactly yeah 
-hmm. So, Mr. Belkan, in 25 years of your company, could you maybe share with me uh, some challenges, obstacles you have faced within uh, your career within the company? Yeah, so I normally uh, will take challenges um, positively, you know, um, because I'm a very positive person. Mm -hmm. uh, I welcome challenges, you know. Um, of course, when you just started a business and you look for financing, you know, um, we had a lot of challenges with the banks in getting financing to buy equipment, mm -hmm. uh, purchase uh, uh, vehicles and so on for the business, yeah. you know. But being a new company, a young person just started business at the age of 27 years old, you know, um, the banks didn't have the confidence in us, you know. So those, uh, that was the main challenge, you know. But guess what? Today, the bankers have confidence in us and you know they are they are supporting us 150 percent right now you know so you know that is just an amazing achievement now yeah. after 25 years you know but that was previously that was the main challenge getting financing and funding from the bank okay. yeah and coming back to mr Dwayne, uh -huh. could you tell me apart from being ceo of um, a quite big company 25 years of uh, existence do you have any other social activities that you do daily? <laughs> yeah, so um, very good question. Um, you know, I'm involved uh, in Freemasonry. You know, I'm presently the uh, District Deputy Grand Master uh, for the 8th Masonic District in Trinidad and Tobago. And my, in my life as a Freemason, you know, we are centered around uh, providing um, support for the needy you know, charity, you know, and, you know, I am deeply involved in charitable organizations, helping uh, persons de uh, develop themselves, especially young people. You know, my focus is on young people, you know, because I know the struggles that I had when I was a young person. So I focus a lot on young, young, uh, young people and try to uh, bring them up in life also, to educate them, to guide them, you know, give them some advice and so on. So uh, my social activities are mainly charity charity what kind of charity projects have you done uh, is it education or is it uh, welfare could you elaborate a little bit right so quite recently we, uh, we uh, did uh, some uh, donations um, to the uh, one of the hospitals in Trinidad you know to the uh, pregnant um, mothers mm -hmm. um, who just give birth a matter of fact we just um, uh, give them some uh, donations mm -hmm. all right um, we give donations to um, some wealthy organizations also and what we want to do in Suriname you know uh, what we want to do here is set up um, scholarship funds mm. all right uh, at the university all right I already indicated and instructed a matter of fact from um, my uh, GM uh, that we must approach the uh, universities all right and inform them that listen DS Belco is here to support the educational needs of the uh, kids. So we're going to do two scholarships in uh, Suriname. All right. Uh, discussions has already started with Anton. Anton uh, the Com University. Uh, the, mm -hmm. That's correct. And also the Natural Technical University. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, to start the entire process of giving the uh, scholarships yeah, to the uh, to, to, uh, to students. Okay. All right. Every year we want to do at least minimum two scholarships. Two scholarships. Okay. Yeah. Um, speaking of scholarships, how important is education for you? Extremely important. Extremely, extremely important. You know, um, I think, you know, um, it is very important, all right, for the uh, country, a matter of fact, you understand, to educate the population, you know. I want to say from nursery to tertiary, it is very important, right, because an educated uh, population will only reap benefits for the country, all right? And, you know, uh, Suriname now going into oil and gas, you know, they should give a lot of consideration, all right, into the education of our population. It's very important, all right? So I'm a stickler for education. Uh, my kids will tell you that, you know, I'm very, very strict with uh, education. Uh, my last son, he just graduated um, from the University of Texas, which is bachelor's degree, and he's going on right now to medicine. You know, and I'm supporting him 150% also, you know, and, you know, encourage children, you know, to do the same, you know, you know, educate yourself because without education, you're nothing. 
Education is one thing no one can take from you. Once you have it, it's yours. Then also education, education, education. That's that's my mindset. That's mind the talk. key to success. Yeah, to the key to success. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Dwayne. Hey, Mr. Dwayne, what is your vision for the future in the oil and gas industry? Yeah. So um, Suriname has a very bright future in the oil and gas industry. From where I came from in Trinidad, uh, we have been in oil and gas uh, for the past hundred plus years, you know, and having these, these discoveries here in Suriname now, I know definitely that uh, Suriname will be in oil and gas for the next hundred plus years, you know. So it's a great opportunity for the uh, for the population. All right, um, I can see that there will be a lot of development in uh, Suriname in the coming uh, next three five years. Uh, you will see some development starting to take place. You know, so I am very excited, mm -hmm. similar to your president and your ministers. Mm -hmm. I am extremely excited for Suriname also, yes. you know, and we want to be part of that growth. You know, we want to be here to support it, support the young people, ensure that they are properly educated to be part of that growth and success. You know, so the country alone is not su succeeding, but also the people of the country must succeed. Okay. Yeah. So um, to wrap up this interview, um, Mr. Duane, I would like to know from you, do you have a message for leadership or a motivational quote you live by that you would like to share with our viewers? What I want to say, and I want to speak to the young people, yeah, education is the key to success. Without education, you are nothing. You will fail, right? You need to be educated now. All right, and not just stop at a bachelor's degree, but go on and try to get your master's. And if you can specialize, do that, okay? Because that is one thing and no one can take from you, education, all right? And continue to be determined, have the courage, and keep your focus, all right? Anything in life is achievable, anything. Just put your mind to it. Your mind is the strongest power that the Almighty gave you, you know? And once you put your mind to it, it is achievable, you know. So, young people need to be, you know, they need to be ambitious, okay, and they need to know that they can achieve anything in this life. Thank yeah. you so much for your insights and your advice, Mr. Thank you very Duane. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for being here in this interview and sharing your highlights and insights with us. And Priscilla, thank you for having me here this morning. It was really a pleasure. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it from Mr. Dwayne Balcon. Education is the key to success. We had him here in Let's Have a Chat. Stay tuned for our next guest.